A big announcement today here in Statesboro as Tormenta FC announces big plans for the future of their program. Coming up at 6, we'll show you how these plans are going to help the economic growth. Georgia Southern is celebrating Black History Month with a group showing the community and students traditional African dances with a modern twist. Hey, good evening, Trish. Yeah, I'm here at Bird Road Mobile Home Park here in Statesboro, where today Bullock County Schools and members of the community came out to help kids and teach them the fun of reading. The Calvary Christian Warriors certainly have had a Cinderella season this year, especially as being one of the top baseball teams in Pinellas County. On Saturday, they traveled to Fort Myers, where they faced the Pensacola Catholic Crusaders in the Class 4A state finals. And in typical Calvary fashion, they were able to get this game done. And I mean done and a mercy ruling in just six innings. Many high school athletes across the state of Florida will have the opportunity to transfer schools without the penalties, let alone the repercussions that they would usually face. Florida Senate Bill 684, or simply called Choice in Sports, would allow students to participate in one sport in the fall at one school, then move to another school and participate in their spring sports without having to deal with any waiting period. The Blue Mile Project is adding a new park to downtown Statesboro and it's going on this land right behind me. Coming up at 6, we'll show you how this park is going to be a tree for all of your four-legged friends. When he's not protecting the city of Statesboro, Police Chief Mike Broadhead is teaching kids a few life lessons on the baseball field. Well, you know, it's really hard being a teenager nowadays and, and when you're you know, 13, 14 years old, there's just a lot of, you know, start to get a lot of social pressures. To help kids deal with those pressures, Broadhead and his officers formed a Little League team. They're called the Statesboro Arrows. We just want to make sure that these kids have a healthy outlet, that they can get together and learn some of the things that you can really only learn from baseball, um, and that you certainly can learn from a team environment. He says all kids are welcome to play, even if they've never picked up a bat. But we're not turning any kids away. Half our kids have never played baseball before. Players Mason Brinson and Caden Brown say since joining the team, the game has taken on a bigger meaning. He's teaching us how yeah. to be men, not awesome. just baseball players. It's a great group of kids, great coaches, and it's just a really, really good thing to do for the community. Baseball is an amazing game, and everyone deserves a chance to play. In Statesboro, Brad Richardson, WSAV News 3. Students at Portal Middle High are putting away the books and pulling out their phones. It covers history, it covers science, math, you name it, it's got it. This is a part of Google's Expedition AR or Augmented Reality. It's an experimental teaching tool offering more interactive learning. Teacher Andrew Harvey pushed to bring it into his classroom. You're getting the visualizer, are able to manipulate the images to where they're able to understand it and we're able to discuss it in detail, whereas a book's a flat image. We're able to see a 3D image of what we're talking about. And the instructor can control the pace of the lesson and the visuals used from another device. The discussion questions and others are embedded in the bottom of it, so uh, your cues and all are already embedded in the lesson. And so you're able to add your discussions, you're able to pause the lesson, or you can go on to multiple expeditions. Where do these expeditions take students like Caitlin Moore? Well, under the sea, into the human heart, anywhere they want. The best part about it is actually seeing it in real life like for when you ha you're experiencing something that's in virtual reality. For Andrew Harvey it all boils down to the motivation to learn. It allows them to be able to have fun, want to come to school, have something to be excited, not just sit there take notes when it does come out officially to the public will actually be able to say hey I've already done that. From the WSAV Georgia Southern Newsroom in Bullock County, Brad Richardson, WSAV News 3. <laughs> Step Africa, a step dancing group is bringing the sounds of African culture to the Eagle Nation stage. Georgia Southern's Multicultural Affairs Director Takesha Brown says campus leaders wanted the students and the community to see these African cultures and understand how they transition to modern day. As a department, we were just kind of brainstorming about some different things that we wanted to do this year. So having an entertaining yet educational way to learn and explore the culture through dancing um, and storytelling we felt would be really cool for our community and our students to take part in. That's where Step Africa steps in. Founded in 1994, they are one of the longest running professional step dance organizations in the country. But what is stepping? 
stepping is a highly energetic polyrhythmic percussive dance form created by African-American fraternities and sororities in the early 1900s. There's a lot of body percussion from using our hands, our bodies, our feet, and our voices to make noise and music. But the roots of the show run deeper. Performers explain where these different dance styles come from, and what sets it apart is the audience involvement. It's a fully interactive show. It's a moments where we're actually asking questions to the crowd. There's moments where we bring the crowd on stage to participate with us and learn a step and be part of our Zulu village as well. So it's more than just our performance. It's definitely a community event. It's that community feeling they want every audience member to feel from beginning to end. Now, South Africa travels not just around the nation, but all over the world. Their next stop is going to be Barry College here in Rome, Georgia. Reporting from Statesboro, I'm Brad Richardson, WSAV News 3. A man, a son, a ranger who lived in our community to defend the freedoms of you and I in Georgia. That's how many vets remember Staff Sergeant Anthony Davis of Savannah. But his mother, Ellen, remembers him as Cookie. Just an outright great American boy. Sports, guns, video games, girls. Sergeant Davis was killed in Iraq in 2009 after six tours as an Army Ranger. Shortly after, Daniel Defense, a maker of guns and ammo, honored him in a special way. We, we actually dedicated our, our flag uh, at our other location to Cookie Davis uh, nine years ago. And after opening their new facility off I-16 in Bryan County, they wanted to keep his memory alive. Friday, alongside soldiers, veterans, and state troopers, they raised and rededicated the new flag in Davis's honor. And as fate would have it, on a meaningful day for the family. His mother was telling us that it was uh, nine years ago today that she learned of his death. A waving flag bringing tears of joy to Davis's face, knowing her son will not be forgotten. It means a lot to me because uh, after nine years, there's still people think about him and remember him. He gave the ultimate sa sacrifice, and we very much, so much appreciate his sacrifice. Brad Richardson, WSAV News 3. Tormenta FC Soccer is coming to the borough. The semi-pro team made the big announcement to city leaders Thursday. After years of hard work, they are moving into Division Three Soccer in the United Soccer League. See the success that Tormenta FC has received on and off the field, and they've earned that. Um, it's great for us to be back here to announce a professional team coming to Statesboro. Plans are underway to build a new soccer stadium that will seat more than 5,000 people. We should see a much bigger, uh, that sports tourism footprint should happen in a much bigger standpoint. And with that brings new opportunities for the city and its residents. So the stadium is really going to hold a lot of retail spaces, professional office spaces, but it'll be a stadium that'll be open year round. It won't just be on game days. It will allow us to host concerts and other sorts of outdoor events. It'll be a full-time venue for, for Statesboro and South Georgia. The stadium is expected to be completed in April of 2019. In Statesboro, Brad Richardson, WSAV News 3. I say ho ho, hey hey, MLK paved the way. The annual Martin Luther King Parade is a day of celebration, peace, and unity. It's wonderful to celebrate what Martin Luther King paved the way for us to do. It's to unify and be here together to celebrate the rights of all. It's that spirit of unity that brought 400 students from Georgia Southern Statesboro, Hinesville, and Armstrong State campuses together to march in the parade. Statesboro Student Government President Dylan John says he's glad to walk side by side with his fellow Eagles. I think it is very special, uh, especially uh, with consolidation, this being one of our first events together as student bodies, uh, to come out and meet up with our, with our fellow brothers and sisters here uh, in Savannah. A show of unity in the face of recent controversy over the merger of Georgia Southern and Armstrong State University. Chris Curtis says it's time for the school and the students to move forward as one. The theme is coming together and the turnout of students today, the enthusiasm of students is, is, is strong evidence of this stronger university that Savannah and, and Statesboro now have. Although some students continue to wear their Armstrong colors, they all marched under one banner wearing shirts with a message, still I rise.
the students that you will see marching in the parade today are some of the gr best embodiments of, of the new Georgia Southern University. In Savannah, Brad Richardson, WSAV News 3.